cool. Hey guys, it's Devin here with Make Anything, and this is my new camera rig. Well, you can't see it, but I'm using it, and you might remember back in April when I did a live stream designing this overhead camera rig. And well, I finally got around to printing out all the parts and putting it all together. So here we are, lying on the floor. Today, I'm going to show you that process, so let's get right to it. So as I mentioned, I started this project out as a live stream, and that's where I did a lot of the design process, figuring out the exact look of this rig, and then modeling it in Fusion 360. It's a really long live stream, but if you're interested in that part of the process, I would suggest checking that out and just quickly skimming through. Today we're going to jump in and start off where we finished, which is 3D printing the parts and putting everything together. So here are the parts printing out on my Zortrax M300. As you can see, these parts are really bulky and sturdy. I printed these with, I think, 70 or 80% infill. So they're going to be really strong and they're really big, so it's going to take a long time to print. And unfortunately, I didn't have enough of this navy blue color that we voted to use, so other parts are going to be red. and. We're just gonna live with that. So the first parts to finish were these feet that I printed out in red. And as you can see, it's quite a bit of work to get these off of the build plate on this Zortrax M200. That's always the case with these larger prints, but I was able to get it all off. And from there, it was really nice and easy to peel them off the raft and the support materials all came off really nice and easily as well. So I went through and removed the support material for all those parts. And then over here on my Replicator 2, I printed out these flexible feet using some Sane Smart TPU. And you can see the corners lifted a bit, but overall they came out really nice. And those I'm just going to stick on the bottom of the feet here. I was expecting that I'd have to glue them down or something, but the fit is actually so perfectly tight that I just popped them into place and that was good enough. They look really cool and they're nice and grippy. Meanwhile, I still had the rest of these parts printing out. As you can see, I ran out of that navy blue filament partway through and I had to swap to this gray Ultrap material, but it all worked out pretty well. You can see that the layer lines are really nice and clean, and that's really impressive for such a huge print. Once that was done, I went ahead and peeled them off once again, and then brought them over to the workshop and removed all of that support material. And just take a look at this connection. Oh, that is a good dovetail joint right there. Very nice and clean. Everything looks great, so I'm really excited about how that turned out. With all those plastic parts cut out, it's time to start working with the wood parts of this camera rig. And unfortunately, I was a little too generous with the tolerance as I was designing this thing, so the fit is pretty loose. So I'm gonna have to use a fair amount of epoxy to just hold that into place. But that's okay for now, I'm only making one of these and the parts took so long to print, it's not really worth doing again. So for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and start measuring out the wood and marking how I wanna cut it. And it's really easy to get these measurements from Fusion 360 using the measurement tool. And I'm gonna go ahead and use this right triangle to mark the pieces of wood and make sure that I cut both sides exactly the same length. So I'll just mark it out and I'm trying to get as many pieces out of these four two by twos that I can possibly get. So I'll get several parts off of each piece of wood, and then I'll take it over to the chop saw and start cutting them to length. Now I've got all my wood pieces, I've got my plastic parts, I'm gonna put it all into place and figure out exactly how it's gonna go together. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and start gluing all of this together using epoxy. So I'll cut out some pieces of wax paper to put underneath the parts, just to make sure that I don't end up gluing this to the table. And then I'll start mixing together my two-part epoxy. And in this case, I'm using some quick cure, which is a nice epoxy because it cures in five minutes. It's really quick to work with. And you just mix it together and slop it in there and stick it all together. So like I said, there's a lot of space in between the plastic and the wood here. So I really had to use a lot of epoxy but this stuff is really strong, so I don't have to really have all the gaps filled. I just need to make sure that there's epoxy touching all the sides of the wood and the plastic. 
and I'll just fill in the empty space afterwards. But for now, I just used that epoxy and stuck all the parts together. Because I have so many parts to stick together and this epoxy cures so quickly, I did several small batches instead of trying to mix a whole tube of epoxy at once. And that ended up being a smart idea because it does take some time to get all of this into place. Here's one of the parts that cured. And like I said, I'm just gonna fill in the empty space here. So I took some wood glue, which is a lot cheaper than epoxy and just squeezed that into those cracks. And I also put a bit of sawdust in there, which helps make it more dense. Here I am finalizing one side of the rig using some more epoxy. And once that's all cured, I'm just gonna go ahead and flip this around and stack my second piece on top of that. And that's gonna allow me to use the first one as a reference to make sure that these two are exactly the same way. Since it is so wobbly, I wanna make sure to mirror it as well as I can. That worked out really great. And now with all my parts epoxied and ready to go, I'm just gonna do a final sanding on all the wood parts because this is really cheap wood and I wanna make sure it's never gonna give me any splinters and I want it to feel nice and smooth as well. So there we go, I'll dust it off really quickly and it's ready to disassemble and take up to my studio. Here in my studio, I'll just go ahead and reassemble it and as intended, it's really nice and quick to throw together and then I'm gonna put it on top of my desk here and. I'm just using this Joby tripod to orient the camera. I was planning to eventually 3D print a camera holder for this rig, but this tripod actually works really well and it makes it a lot more versatile. So I'm thinking I might just use this for the time being. So here's what my setup might look like as I'm filming from above, or in this case, I'll use it to take a time-lapse of Natalie while she's painting to test this thing out. And as you can see, it looks really great. All right, so we have the rig, but we're not quite done because the reason I made this whole thing flat pack is so that I could store it against my pegboard. So the next step was to print out some pegboard holders for this rig. Here you can see me printing out parts on the Zortrax M300 again, using their Z glass material. And I printed this at 100% infill. It came out looking super strong, super sturdy, and the layer quality is great as always. But when it came to removing the support material on these little pegs, I ran into a lot of trouble. Everything was just gummed up and the pegs were totally filled with support material. Even though I used the light fill option in the slicer, I just was not able to take off all the support material. It was really unfortunate and it's cases like this where I wish that I could use an external slicer to have more control over the support material and things like that when I'm printing on these Zortrax printers. Because unfortunately, I just had to trash these parts. I ended up reprinting these parts on this little ZincBot capsule 3D printer, which happens to cost a tenth of the price of the M300. And while the layer quality isn't quite as perfect, it still looks really nice. And I was actually able to get the support material off super easily because I made those supports in Simplify 3D. Once all the parts were printed, I went ahead and positioned them on the pegboard and snapped them into place. And as you can see, it's a really nice and easy way to just throw my parts up on the wall like that. I did the same with the legs on the side and it also worked really great. Here's another cool time-lapse I did of one of Natalie's paintings just to show you what this thing can really do. All right guys, that's my overhead camera rig and I'm super happy with how it turned out. It's really great for my specific situation where I'm mostly just gonna be using it on this table so it's made to fit and it also very easily stores on my pegboard in the back. So there's a lot of different ways to do these overhead rigs but for what I'm dealing with, this one's really cool. Plus I also had that Joby tripod ready to go and that makes this thing super versatile. So you might not be seeing this thing set up too much more, but you'll probably be seeing it in use quite often in future videos. So look forward to that. 
If you happen to want this exact same camera rig for yourself, I'll put the files up for my mini factory, as well as the measurements for the different pieces of wood. You can actually make this top one as short or long as you want to adjust it for your own use, so that's pretty cool. All right, well, that's it for today. So until next time, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything, and don't forget to stay inspired.